Um, hi, um, my name is, my phone number is Wisconsin, and um, I'm, I'm wondering, although I've contacted property, um, if that in the Prince investigation, if any um, excess paperwork has been found um, in my name, um, he would have been a main trustee on um, a trust that my aunt set up. She would have been my of Red Wing, Minnesota. And um, she set it up before she passed away. Um, and it involves, you know, um, uh, modeling and acting things, uh, all of my bank accounts. She uh, entrusted them with prints um, because she was afraid they would be stolen by a foster child. And um, so I'm just wondering, um, you know, since his fiduciary duty would have been completed this year and uh, the patent I own on the music for MPG and some others it turned into um, will be up in August. I'm wondering if any paperwork has been found and um, when the FBI was looking through there, um, I needed to also apply for um, um, the probate as I have sister. And so um, I lived with him during the 70s. Um, anyways, um, my number again. Is, and um, he had loved to talk to someone and find out what happened to my contract. So uh, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hi, Nikki. I'm very sorry that I missed your call on my cell phone. Um, you did return my call, and I really appreciate that. This has to do with um, a lot of things that I know about because um, we grew up with uh, uh, Prince Rogers Nelson living within our home and, you know, just being a part of our family. Um, I have a case number in which I have drive-bys because I was going to meet with John Breen. I'm uh, sorry, John Breen. Uh, the reporter that constantly followed him around. Um, I was hoping to maybe tell him and it would get out, but right after that, just re one hour before I was to meet with him, I had a drive-by threat, uh, warning shot. And it, and then I tried to contact, contact him again a month and a half later, and, uh, I mean recently here. And uh, enough, the drive-by happened again. Um, you know, I have the case number for that. Um, I really need to get this information out, but I need to be safe. I can't have my name exposed at all because I'm deathly afraid of these drive-bys. And I just pray I can remain anonymous with you. I mean, maybe not with you, but uh, with everybody else because I, I can't uh, put my family in danger in any sort of way. I'm sure that, you know, um, you see, we separated ourselves from his career so that we could deal with our, our family relationship with him. So we didn't get involved in his career. And, you know, I was actually stunned, shocked uh, when, his, when he passed because there are many things that are inconsistent. He's claustrophobic. I've known him for many, many ages. He's claustrophobic. He never would go into that elevator alone. And immediately, as soon as I heard that, I knew something was very, very wrong. When Mickey dropped him off, he never, uh, Roger Prince never lives, oh, he doesn't stay in that place alone. He doesn't like to be alone. It's just one of his, his kind of a, kind of like an obsessive behavior type thing. Um, He's terrified of being alone. He's um, he's extremely claustrophobic and will not go into the elevator alone, and that's a true fact. 
so I am very concerned, and this has to do with the will. I do know where the will is, a handwritten will, because he would he would amend that will in the middle of the night if he had to. And um, that is why, see, she, his sister, is excommunicated, basically, from his will. And she knows that because the week and a half to week long fight that they had while he was so distraught and riding bikes around weird places and doing very odd things, things against his nature. And I know when he does things against his nature, that means that he is freaked out, very, very scared about something. Now, she was threatening to say that he was an, he was a junkie. He's not a junkie whatsoever. Um, he doesn't do drugs. He he tried little things when he was a teen. He has not anything to do with drugs. He called his the doctor out, but his doctor couldn't come. But he wanted him to bring information about his blood tests that that would prove to her that he is no druggie, that he takes his medication properly. And then for fentanyl to come into this, I looked up fentanyl. And this, uh, he never dealt, this is not, this is not a Prince deal. This is not what his life is about. Um, That is a medication for cancer patients and things of that nature, people in car accidents. Um, That's not something he would get involved in. But I did read that it is tasteless. So I'm very afraid of the things that are going on right now because Drive-bys mean that somebody is doing something wrong. And I don't live a kind of lifestyle in which I would have my numbers. I do hope to hear from you, Nikki, and I will try back again. I'm sorry. I missed your call. Thank you. Okay, they gave me the correct investigator. I'm sorry about that. I had called back earlier. Um, Sergeant, uh, I am not one of the crazy loons out there in the world. Um I never even knew he was uh, that Prince Rogers Nelson was even famous outside of this country. I was I had to remain dumb of it because he was part of our family, and I didn't want to see him in that light. Okay, I know a lot. I know too much. That's why I have drive-bys at my house. Um, so I just needed to say I need needed to just reiterate the fact that this is so important that I talk to you, and I have been terrified to come forward. Um, wanting to keep my wanting to just be anonymous and um, but the media doesn't stop I don't this never ends and I don't know how they found me how they discovered anything I have no idea I don't know how the drive by people the well yes actually I do Jim Breen the guy that went after us all those years um, Jim Breen he's a, a, a critic for the Star and Tribune. He was always after us, and I met him once over at Paisley at the park there. Now, uh, so I thought that I may be able to trust him. Well, it turned out after I talked to him one hour before I was to meet with him in a, in a secret, silent place um, to give him this information. I don't know why I was going to give it to him, but I didn't know who else to call. Um, I My home was shot at. It was a drive-by. I know the sound of the muffler. Um, that I'll never get that sound out of my head for the rest of my life. We had witnesses. I have a case number. You know, there were several more uh, drive-bys that other people witnessed, and with the air conditioner on, I didn't. Um, I witnessed only one more. So two of them I witnessed. <laughs> Thankfully, I wasn't standing outside. Um, I don't want to die right now. But I hold information that is pertinent to this investigation as far as what was found in his system and what is going on with the the so-called no will. There is a will. There is a will. And I know exactly where it is because he showed it to me, and he amended it every single night of his life. And he was a very conscientious about the medications that he had to take. He called the medications. He didn't say drugs. He said meds. He was called a dependent because he was in chronic pain. 
I had to massage out the sciatics down his the sciatic nerves down his legs. It was so bad into his feet. Now, um, and his hip his hip bones. I had to massage that. Um, it was very very bad on him. Um, and now, the, the the situation here is very extreme. Somebody in particular was cut out of that will. And she was cut out quite a while ago, and she didn't know about it until a few weeks, some some weeks before his passing. Uh, and I would definitely call it a murder. So that's why I say that it is very, very urgent that you get back to me. Please. Um, my name, I'm so afraid to say it because I'm, I'm living in terror. Um, I don't want to die. And with that much money involved with these people, they're greedy. They're money hungry. I can't deal with it. Um, I loved him as a family member, not for his money. I didn't care about his money. He helped me through college, and that was it. And I wouldn't allow him to do anything else because I don't want. I did not want him to ever think that we cared about him for his money. Don't care. No. Um, I was going to make it my own way, as I told him. So this, my case, my, my situation in this is love. I care about him, and he needs justice. Justice. Because what has happened to him is injustice, and it really is scary here. And I, I don't know what to call, I, what, if I should give you my name, if I shouldn't. I don't even know how these things work. Um, if you could just call me, sir, this part of, is my part of my name. So please, if you could call me that, and my number is six. My my cell is six one two. Hi, Jason. This is calling. I left a message yesterday. My number is three three. Um, I, I've spoken to you um, before about talking to Prince the night he passed away. Um, he did tell me about another injury that he had. And that was a cut he said that he got from uh, uh, Phillips, Phillips, what's his name, uh, Maurice Phillips watch, cut him when he was hold, forcing, holding his head and forcing pills in his throat. And he, he told me that it was bleeding and, and I, he, he, he said, I, oh, should I, I, I guess I should put pressure on it. And he was uh, putting pressure on the, the cut because he said it was bleeding a lot. Um, I, I don't know why you people don't believe me. You really need to. <clears throat> oh, hi. I'm sorry. And um, I met Prince in 2004, and we became really good friends. And in 2007, we uh, were got engaged. And um, it's complex, and there's a lot of details, and so I've rather just talk to you um, in person or over the phone, but um, the reason it's complex, as I said before, is because my memories of print I, were suppressed. I am basically having flashbacks of things he told me, and um, anyway, and it's just emotional for me to talk about. It's hard <clears throat> to talk about, but... Um, I do have memories, specific memories of him telling me things that were related to uh, the drugs that he took and how he got them. And like I said, these are memories that only recently in the last few months um, I've had. So that's why I didn't know if it would help you or not, but I felt like uh, sharing them may be beneficial. Um, But again, there are memories that I am just recalling and kind of trying to piece together um, things that I remember. So um, if you want to give me a call back, um, I have two children at home and I uh, can't always talk in front of them. So um, if there's a time you want to set, uh, we could talk or if you want to start a dialogue through email, um, that would work as well. So anyway, I'm, I apologize um, for not leaving more details, but I just wanted to give you a little more information with this phone call. Um, again, at my number is five. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hello, Sergeant. 
My name is Rob, and I'm calling because um, all the things that I keep hearing on the news about Prince and stuff is really um, starting to get to me very badly. Um, I, I live in California, and I, I just have some questions that I feel are, are important that you guys should be looking into. I don't really know if you are or not, but um, I'm really disturbed. Like, um, I'm really thinking that if his uh, chef might have something to do with it. I don't know um, what, what you guys know, but I'm tired of hearing all these different things about him. And this is very important to me. Very important in my life. So, my number, I know you're busy and I'm sorry to bother you. My number is, if you have time, could you please call me? It's very important. Thank you. Bye bye. Hi, I was just wondering if you guys had any, like, purple roses for Prince. Like, oh, I took his death hard. Yeah. I just saw the tip thing on the news. I was, I, I just thought it would be, like, support and stuff. But give me a call back, 6-1. Sergeant Meyer, my name has been calling and calling and calling about the Prince Rogers Nelson's case. Uh, I wish you guys would check his phone records. I spoke to him that night. Um, I, I've given my my account several times, but I remembered a detail that I had had um, couldn't remember, and that was that he told me he had an injury. He had a cut. He had a cut on his. I can't remember if he said it was on his cheek or his forehead, but he said that when um, uh, Phillips was uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Maurice Phillips was. Was, was holding him down and forcing the pills on him. He said he cut him, and he was putting pressure on the cut because it was bleeding. Um, my number is 518-461-7933. Um, uh, please call me. Uh, if you don't call me, please please check the phone records because Prince was hacking my phone at the time, and he was listening to my calls. And and um, while he was in, and he had permission, so he wasn't committing a crime. Um, and, and while he was... Um, um, on the phone, this this particular attack happened, and I and I listened. I heard it because I was talking to a friend of mine, and I heard the attack. And then Prince came on the phone after they went upstairs to um, put pills in his things, and he explained to me what what had happened and and his injuries. And then he got quiet. And that when they came back downstairs, please. Please talk to him. Oh, and he said that he he cut him with his watch. He said that uh, uh, when he was forcing the pills on him, the, the cut came from his watch. When uh, thank you. Bye. Hi. Um, my name. That's my cellular phone number. Um, I'm the only one at this number again. Six. Um, I was in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, uh, that's where I'm at right now, actually. But about a year and a half ago, a, uh, a well-known musician in Nashville told me that a private bodyguard that uh, was working for Prince when uh, Brad, for, you know, Prince's group, when uh, they were doing a concert in Nashville. Uh, somebody in the group uh, or organization asked the bodyguard to go out and purchase some cocaine. Um, and the bodyguard refused to do it because uh, he's a religious person. He didn't think it was correct. It was illegal, you know. So uh, uh, Don Moan was the person that told me this. He's a um, Christian musician, and he told me at 
uh, family worship center church where he had a concert that night. Um, F, let's see, uh, family worship center, uh, fwcenter.org in Murfreesboro, uh, Tennessee. It's uh, just uh, south of Nashville, uh, about a half an hour just by car. Um, they can tell you how to reach Moen. Uh, M-O-E-N. Moen is uh, Hales. He grew up in Two Harbors, Minnesota, by the way, so he'd be interested in this um, in helping you, I think. So um, I, I, he, he can give you the name of the bodyguard. It's some sort of a private um, person that stars hire uh, when they come to town to do uh, gigs. You can call me. I can give you more information on this, but I hope this will be helpful. I'm sorry. I, I just been so busy. I never even thought of calling you before this. Um, again, he told me this. Um, my own personal take on this, um, Dr. Matt Fink uh, was a keyboardist for Prince. He knows a lot about what goes on inside of the Prince organization. Um and uh, all the troubles there and so forth. He lives in Savage, Minnesota. His, he traveled and toured with Prince for 11, 12 years. Um, but uh, I called him and told him the next day because uh, Matt, the keyboardist, Fink, Matt Fink, he had told me those guys never did any drugs. So I suspect... It's when those new girls came on board. I, I, I don't have any specific information to suspect that, but I just kind of discern that probably when he got those young girls in there, um, the Third Eye Girl band girls, they probably brought some people along with them that brought some uh, some of this stuff that caused his downfall. I, I could be incorrect on that, though. And then I can tell you this. Um, I went to the University of Minnesota Medical School, and ordinarily, unless a doctor overprescribes or the patient somehow gets their hands on extra doses of um, painkillers, you know, it, if if you take the right amount of painkiller for the pain, a person shouldn't become addicted. It's only when they start getting other pills or they're taking more, take more than is prescribed 